Hello everyone. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how to change the PLC address that an object is mapped to during runtime by using an index register. To begin, we're going to open an instance of EasyBuilder Pro. And within the project on my display, I have added a driver for a Compact Logix PLC. Now, there are certain conditions in which it may be beneficial to change an object's address. As an example, if your application has several devices of the same type and you want to create a configuration menu for each one, a potential solution may be to create a window that contains the configuration needed to communicate with the first device, and then use the Window Copy tool to quickly create several instances of this window while manually readdressing each object. However, a better approach would be to create a single window in which an index register is used to dynamically change the address of each object during runtime. This not only reduces development time, it also makes the application easier to maintain. To use an index register, I'll begin by creating a numeric object that is addressed to an element within an array in the PLC. Within the read slash write section of the general tab, we can use the settings button to configure an index register. To do this, I'll first specify the tag as an element within our array of numbers. And with that configured, our index register checkbox will become accessible. I'll select this checkbox to enable our index register. And you'll notice that a description of the address format is displayed, which details how the index register may be used to view different elements within this array. If needed, you can assign different objects to different index registers by using the index drop-down list on the left side. And although most applications will not require you to index an address past the maximum value of a 16-bit number, for special applications we also have a set of 32-bit index registers. With our settings properly configured, I'll click OK and place this object on our work area. Now this object is linked to index 0, and the value that we write within index 0 will change the element displayed within this object. So how do we write to index 0? Well, each index is actually a special system register, and these registers start at LW9200. To write a value into the address of a specific index register, I'll create a new numeric object, and within the read slash write settings menu, I'll ensure that the device drop-down list is set to our local HMI and that the system tag checkbox is selected. With that configured, I'll select the address type drop-down list and within this list, I'll locate the address index register associated with index zero. After which, I'll place this object on our work area create a few additional objects to show the value within the first, second, and third element of our array, and then download this to my HMI for testing. Using CMT Viewer, we can monitor our project in real time. Now you'll notice that the value shown within our indexed object currently corresponds to the first element in our array. However, if we change the value within our index register, the element referenced by the indexed object changes accordingly. And if we write a new value within our indexed object, the value of that index will be overwritten. Now for most PLCs, the index registers within EasyBuilder Pro are compatible with single dimensional arrays. This means that by using the same method, we can index an array of 32-bit numeric data or an array of Boolean or character data. But what if we need to index an array of strings or an array of UDT? Each string within our compact logics contains an array of sent data, meaning that an array of string would be a multi-dimensional array. For most PLCs, our index register will only allow the programmer to index the innermost array, which given this example would be the array of characters contained within a string element. However, within EasyBuilder Pro version 6.06.02.301 or greater, it is now possible to index multidimensional arrays when using certain drivers like our Rockwell Ethernet IP Compact Logix Free Tag Names driver. For a complete list of drivers that support this feature, please see the description below. To index an array of string, I'll begin by creating an ASCII object. And as before, I'll select the Settings button within the Read Slash Write section of the General tab. 
and configure the address to target the first sent element within the data array of strings. With that configured, I'll enable our index register. And you'll notice that we now have a drop down list that will allow us to select the position of our index within the address. Since I would like to index each string in its entirety, as opposed to the sent element within our data array, I will index our strings variable and set the element count to five words. Before I place this object, I'd like to note that string data within the compact logics should be read and written with Unicode set as the encoding format. I'll configure this within the data format section above the read slash write address and click OK. Now I'll create a few additional objects to show the value within the first, second, and third element of our array, and then download this to my HMI for testing. Within CMT Viewer, you'll notice that the value shown within our indexed object currently corresponds to the first element of our array. However, if I change the value within our index register, the element referenced by our indexed object changes accordingly. And as before, if I write a new value within our indexed object, the value at that index will be overwritten. I hope you've learned a lot during this brief introduction to index registers with an Easy Builder Pro. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our channel to check out the latest technical tutorials. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.